Hello guys, this is Dr. Lior Barrell, and right now um, I am in total shock and so happy uh, with black magic right now. I mean, I, I can't even begin to express how I feel. I mean, of course, these were all talks and speculations earlier. I kind of knew about it and all of that stuff, but to actually see this come to fruition is incredible to see the model and everything. So we're going to be talking about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I followed Blackmagic since the beginning days, even when they had their deck links and all of that stuff. But then I owned their cinema camera, then their production camera, then their Ursa, then Ursa Mini. Uh, I, I have uh, both of their flagship uh, uh, monitors. Uh, what is it? The uh, vi uh, Video Assist and Video Assist 4K. And I am just blown away. And of course, I was there with all the problems they had and the issues and their, you know, uh, their lies uh, that was in the beginning. I remember all the, the big tension uh, when they said it was going to come out on a certain date. It didn't. And then it had a lot of issues with banding and all kinds of other crap that they fixed. Uh, what is it? Uh, you know, pretty much uh, everything to do with that. And then the production camera 4K came out, and I really loved it. And and it just it was a progression from there on in. And the only camera I never had was the Pocket Cinema camera. Now I worked with it, obviously. Uh, and I got to tell you, it, it it was incredible to have a camera that could fit right into your pocket, okay? And uh, to go out and about and shoot. The only thing I didn't like is that it didn't have 4K. Um, it didn't have uh, SDI, uh, you know, inputs. Uh, it didn't have, uh, what is it, uh, high frame rates as well. And I didn't like that about the production camera 4K, although the production camera 4K was uh, shoot and cinema camera uh, 2.5. Uh, okay, well, released the most incredible images. So for me, I didn't care much about that. Uh, the uh, Pocket Cinema Camera was a great uh, tool. Obviously, it had its downfalls as well. But uh, it didn't have what I was looking for. It didn't have 4K, and I love to shoot at 4K. So uh, even though sometimes I release uh, HD and so on and so forth for commercials and so on and so forth on TV or even uh, 2K in uh, uh, theaters or whatever, uh, the thing is it, it, it gives you the freedom to, to, to crop and to also, you know, do uh, close-ups and, you know, oh, that's the beauty of 4K that you could play around with. That doesn't necessarily mean that you release uh, footage, especially at that time, at uh, 4K. So it was really cool to to have that uh, option, but I wasn't a big fan of the, uh, uh, of the uh, cinema camera, uh, pocket cinema camera. So I was waiting for this camera to come out, and lo and behold, it finally did, and man... Okay, first off, let me just start off by saying, I don't know why they call it the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. It should be just called Cinema Camera 4K something else, because it isn't a pocket one. You can't fit this in your pocket. There's no way. Uh, it is shaped exactly like a DSLR, which I love it because it has that grip. Uh, obviously, I didn't hold it myself. I can't wait to go to the show and actually... Uh, have my hands on this thing, but that grip, I know exactly what that is, and I really love it. Red camera, uh, the Scarlet, I think, had it or something where you could have a grip uh, attached to it or and stuff, and I always was a big fan of that grip because it, it, it's good for stability, even though I'll have it most likely on a, on a, you know, a, my Ronin or whatever, and to be able to actually have something of that form factor, and I always told, I, I was writing to uh, Black Magic that even though I love the Ursa Mini, I wish they could release something like a high frame uh, camera that is in the same crop factor as the original cinema camera or production camera 4K uh, because I really love the form factor. I was able to go into trunks, do stuff. You know, with the with, with the mini, you still have a little bit of girth and, you know. So because of that, I was hoping for something like this, uh, something in an in-between uh, um, thing. And I'm going to tell you the positives and negatives uh, of this camera here. So that's the positive, really. I really enjoy to have uh, that kind of form factor uh, again and I'll be able to use that and utilize that with high frame capabilities. Okay, so let's just go down. It's a uh, uh, M, uh, you know, uh, a four thirds, uh, micro four thirds, right? Um, uh, sensor, which means pretty much if you own a pocket cinema camera, you can just take the lenses and just go right into that. I use EF and I use uh, you know all kinds of lenses really uh, for my uh, for my work. I never really have micro four thirds, so what I would do is obviously get the EF. Uh, adapter 
uh, on it and hello and behold it will work you know perfectly well and uh, that's it and you know that, that that's how you solve that issue but if you guys are coming from the pocket cinema camera and already have micro four, four thirds uh, lenses you'll be able to just transition right away to it even with your SD cards okay it shoots 4k at 60 frames which is remarkable because that's what I wanted. I wanted something of that small fact, you know, form factor nature that I could take with me anywhere and actually film in uh, 60 frames to have that slow motion instead of fudging it and faking it, which I've done successfully. A lot of people couldn't tell the difference because of the way I, I do certain uh, work on uh, After Effects and, uh, you know, other things uh, uh, on that. Uh, but the thing is... I can tell, and I always wanted something that was natively at 60 frames, to be honest, 120 frames, but to have 60 frames at 4K, shooting at RAW is incredible, okay? Uh, now, you could shoot at 120 frames per second, shooting at HD windowed, okay? So you could have that option uh, where you could shoot high frame rates at a lower resolution. Again, I wish they had 120 frames on 4K, but you know, unfortunately, not. I would love, I would have loved it if they had a way that they can uh, lower the bit rate and then allow you to, uh, you know, shoot at uh, 120 frames, sort of like the iPhone or whatever. Like to go in the lower bit rate, but uh, higher than a cell phone, for example, uh, for that option. Who knows? Maybe they'll come out with an update. I highly doubt it, but uh, it, it is good that they're giving you the 60, you know frames and if you want to shoot HD windowed you could shoot it at uh, uh, 1080p uh, and uh, have 120 frames which is pretty cool I guess you could always up res another thing is the thing I didn't like about the pocket cinema uh, camera which I have used a lot uh, you know when I rented it out and used it as a C or D even D camera as I called it uh, for certain shots um, the low light capability was awful. I mean, all of you guys could can uh, agree with me. I'm sure on that. Uh, you'd have to. I mean, even though I light, I lit the hell out of the scenes. You have to use even more light, and you know, than you would use on, let's say, a DSLR. Obviously, you're not going to use the same uh, things. Uh, but uh, that was uh, one of its flaws. Now, here's the thing. Now they gave you 200 ISO to get this 25. 1600 ISO but the only thing that I don't see mentioned here is what is the native ISO I think they should have made that very clear because as we know the production camera 4k went up to 800 uh, you know ISO but you will see grain you'll see a lot of problems so they say shoot at 400 and where you'll have the uh, that's the native one and where you'll have the best results. So what are we dealing with? What is the native one? What is the one that we won't see any issues with? But to have about 25,600 ISO, I mean, you got a huge, huge spectrum to work with here. So I think that's incredible. That's amazing. I would have loved to see uh, what was their native one. I don't know why they didn't mention it. I find that, uh, you know... Um, you know, puzzling. I have no idea. Uh, now, that in terms of recorded media, here's where the beauty comes in. So it does use CFast uh, cards. It uses also the, your SD cards uh, from your old camera. You can use that. I'm sure that I have a feeling that if you're shooting 4K RAW, you're gonna need to use uh, CFast uh, cards, especially at 60 uh, frames per second. And obviously, the SD will work probably more on the HD, unless you'll start seeing frames and horrible things skips. I, I don't know. I mean, that's how it was on the other one. I just, uh, I believe that if they had CFast, they would have made it work much better. So CFast cards, it's good that they have that option right now. Notice that it, it did drop in price, but it's still pretty expensive cards. So always when you want to buy cameras like this, uh, you oh, I know a lot of uh, young uh, filmmakers out there remember uh, a lot of them before they were all interested in that and then when they saw uh, you know the recorded media they're all freaked out you always have to have everything in account before you obviously buy um, uh, buy this camera so you will need uh, CFast cards obviously at 4k raw if that is your your um, what you're gonna be filming with you need to know what is the recorded media you're gonna use and most likely you are gonna use the CFast now here's the beauty it also has USB-C okay obviously uh, 
with the USB-C, that opens up a lot of capabilities, all right? I'm thinking battery power, external, which I'm sure they're going to have other type of external things uh, to it. But also, it can record directly. This is uh, uh, the battery thing I have no idea about, but I'm sure you could, but we'll see. But what, uh, what was actually announced was that you can use external hard drives. Uh, or uh, you know external recorded you know uh, recordables uh, like I remember I used the Firestore with the uh, uh, HVX 200 uh, so you'll be able to use that and utilize that so that's cheaper media that you can actually get and you will be able to run I'm sure because now they make them extre extremely fast especially when you get your SDDs uh, you could be able to record probably 60 frames and all that and just have uh, external uh, recorded you know media recordable media at your fingertips, just hook it up to the USB-C and everything will be great. But obviously I like the CFast because I like more of a cleaner finish without you know wires and all that crap hanging out and all that stuff. Another thing is it has the Ursa operating system, which I really, really, really love. I can't emphasize how much I love it because <laughs> it's like, it, it's just incredible. I love the ease of use, everything about that. And especially if you're coming from the Blackmagic you know, uh, camera world, it's so cool to see something that's familiar always go throughout the board. I think that's pretty cool. That's why I love the Panasonic brands and all of that, or the Sony brands, and so on and so forth. Another thing uh, it has, like I said, it's like a DSLR. It has uh, still frames uh, that you could take a picture, uh, you know, from that. So it's like a picture camera, which, you know, a still frame of that at 4K. Well, I, I think it's really cool that it has that option. And also that it has that uh, form factor that you could even go into selfie mode with this thing. So it's pretty cool. Uh, it has Bluetooth capabilities. I can't wait to see how they, uh, what they implement into that uh, ecosystem of Bluetooth. I mean, I bet you you could control your camera. Uh, you know, also like the others, uh, you know, now they do with uh, with the um, uh, your cell phone uh, or something like that. That would be really cool. Or even to use, uh, uh, I don't do that, but uh, you know, Bluetooth uh, head, uh, you know, um, headsets. I don't do that. I like always using cords. That's just me. I'm old school. I don't know, but it is good that they implemented that into the whole uh, package here. Another great thing, which obviously the. Uh, uh, pocket ca uh, cinema ca uh, pocket cinema camera failed in was their horrible audio and now the audio here you have four internal microphones i'm going to be honest with you if you're using it a professional way uh, you know professional thing not like as a soccer mom or anything like that go ahead and get yourself a zoom h4n it's cheap uh, a zoom uh, h6 you know whatever uh the, these external mi uh, microphones are going to uh, you know um, uh, kits are going to get you obviously better uh, sound than even hooking up directly into that. It has a mini XLR in it, which I'm really happy they have that. Uh, I wish they had a full XLR, but obviously due to the form factor, I think they went with the mini. Um, I have it already because I have the um, uh, video assist. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, regular, you know, the re regular video assist. So it had uh, also a mini XLR. So I'm happy they have uh, that that part in it. Uh, sorry. Uh, Sorry, mi uh, video assist 4K that had the mini XLRs, uh, also in, uh, you know into that. So I, I'm really happy that they they implemented that into into the package as well. So it does give you great audio if you want to go out and about, you know, do run and gun just for scratch recording, but more like B-roll and you don't really care about the audio. You could go ahead and and be happy that you're going to get good audio but also if you're using external mics, which I do all the time, it's good to know that you'll get a good scratch. Uh, recording when you have four internal microphones working and especially on mini XLR when you could use uh, a mini XLR directly and get good uh, scratch uh, recordings for that now it has full HDMI input I do wish they had the SDI I think it's time that they stick to the SDI but whatever you know they got the full HDMI I'm really happy they have that instead of mini you know instead of the instead of the minis or whatever I would have loved to see an SDI on that, so that is my negative. I don't. I'm not a big fan of the HDMI. I like it better when it, you know, had these locks and, you know, with the SDI. I, I just, I, I, again, that's just me talking. A big plus I really love what they have is a five inch. Okay, so it's the same thing, same size as my Video Assist original. Uh, a five inch display in back of it. Now I don't know how that's going to work with the battery, but. 
a full uh, HD, you know, uh, 1080p, which you need for a 4K. When you're shooting at 4K, you need that for focus and everything. So to be able to have that on your camera is remarkable. I I think that, I mean, you could always use your exter you know, your your external, you know, uh, video my video assist, for example, the external production, uh, you know, assist uh, whatever uh, monitors. But you also have that option. Now, I don't know if you could shut it off or on. I hope you could shut it off because I'm willing to bet you could squeeze more battery life like that out. Uh, it does come now. Here's the beauty. Uh, you know, because it comes at a price uh, price point of a... About, it's going to cost about $1,300. What is it? $1,295. They always have those weird prices. But it comes, uh, you know, even though the original one is like, what, $995 right now? So when you take into account, they're giving you the full version of DaVinci Resolve 15. Now, if you guys know, anybody that owns the production camera and so on and so forth, or any of their big flagships, you're going to get the full version, and it goes on forever. You get free updates forever, so far. I mean, I don't want to, you know, speak up, and then they're going to say, oh, well, now we're going to charge you. Uh, so now, uh, obviously, the DaVinci Resolve 15 is an all-in-one package, I mean, Fusion, uh, Fairlight, all that, uh, you know, uh, yeah, all of these things that are... Um, uh, that are included in it and it's also an NLE and all of that so to get the full version that lets you operate at 4k and beyond it's really awesome to have that ability and it has activation code because I am so sick of using this crap I mean I hate using the dongles you don't know how much I have written to black magic if they could give me like an exchange where I could send this piece of crap back to them and they could give me an activation code because I really hate it I can't tell you how much I hate it that I have to worry about this thing but all you know also on a laptop when I put it in I'm scared it's gonna break off or something I'm just terrified because then I'm gonna have to spend and shell out more money so the average price of the da Vinci system is about what uh, 295 so you put that on top and that's where the, you get the price point of a uh, 1295 so they throw that beautiful package in it with the activation code another beautiful thing is i'm so happy they're using the canon lp e6 batteries which you could find like anywhere you can even find knockoff ones that work like i used to use on my old old canon cameras uh, to be able to squeeze out about 60 minutes, that's what they claim, uh, 60 minutes. I'm kind of doubtful about that, especially because they're using um, a full HD 5-incher. I think it's going to really be about 30 minutes of record time. That's just me. I don't know. That's my assumptions. I don't know, uh, but they claim it could go to 60 minutes. I'm willing to bet if you shut off the monitor, it'll go probably to 60 minutes, but otherwise I'm thinking 30 minutes. But they claim 60 minutes runtime on each battery. You could find these batteries literally anywhere on eBay. You could buy them in six packs, 10 packs, and it'll cost you like uh, maybe a good 10 pack for like 100. But they obviously go for like a retail value of 35 bucks. Still extremely cheap. So I don't think you have to worry about that. And also, if you want to rig it up like people used to do with the pocket cinema camera, and I've done it a couple of times where you could rig it up completely, you could get your V-mount, you know, tilter rigs hooked up directly to it, and I'm sure everything will work out fine and dandy. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure they're going to come out with some kind of attachment for it or whatever, and it'll come out because it has a full... Uh, you know, uh, attachment for the camera for the power. So you could, I'm sure, hook up power bricks and stuff like that to it as well. But again, all speculations. We'll see how it all forms. So all around, a great, great package for a thousand two ninety five. Okay, for twelve hundred ninety five dollars, it's a freaking steal. I can't tell you how much what a steal it is. Now it's it's set to come out in about September. I'm going to say, due to its track record of Blackmagic promising release dates and then always coming later, just tell yourself, you know, it's going to come out in September. We'll see what happens. I personally do, do not want to buy this camera just yet. Obviously, they have a lot of issues that come out with the camera. I want to see them ironing it out. Uh, it's a steal. It's definitely worth it if, if you don't have a camera uh for for use and you're looking for a camera to you know to uh to whether to start or whether to do wedding weddings or uh you know soccer mom stuff or even do real you know filming and stuff like that and you want to go out and not spend an arm and a leg go ahead and, and pre-order this camera myself i want to wait to to see till the, i mean obviously i have too many cameras on me already i want to wait till i see them iron out whatever problem i want to see how they take it out i want to see some footage from it 
but 13 stops of dynamic range, HDR capability. I mean, this is a steal. You're going to get a great, I, I'm willing to bet we're going to get great footage coming out of this camera. I definitely want to use this camera as a C camera uh, to my other uh, cameras and, uh, you know, see how that works out for me. But I, I'm definitely going to get it. I just want to see them first release it out, see how it works, all the issues, you know, have it worked out. And then I'm going to actually buy this camera uh, from, uh, you know, by their B&H or uh, uh, some other company. We'll see. But uh, they B H always hooks you up. I, I always like waiting because B H always hooks you up that if you pre-order, uh, you get this. But then later on, you see their like holiday deals where they throw in free crap. Uh, like last time I got with my production camera 4K, I pre-ordered it and I got like Sony Vegas for free. I got like a bunch of other uh, cool stuff for free. And then after that, they released some other thing and that I told them, guys, come on, I always buy from you. Can you hook me up? And they were nice enough to hook me up with it. So uh, with, uh, you know, even though it came out way later, uh, their uh, deal, they, they hooked me up with it still when I told them about that. So I, I really like B&H. Uh, not endorsing them in any way. I'm just, you know, saying that's, I'm from New York. It's right here. You know, I just go and feel up the camera see how it is and i love their service and that's why i buy them uh but uh all in all looks like a fantastic camera changes i would have loved to see i would have loved to see a full S sdi input uh on this baby i really um that's about it i mean i really would like to see an sdi i would have loved to see 4k at lower bit rates shooting at 120 frames instead of the you know 1080p windowed uh, to shoot at 120 i would have loved to see about about 60 frames is a big up for something of its small uh you know small form factor i still would have loved to see 120 at a I would have loved to see more resolution uh, resolutions that you could play with. For example, go to 2K or 2.5, 2.6, whatever, and then go to uh, you know a higher uh, you know to 3K, 4K, and so on and so forth. So like you have increments that you could work from HD to that, and I think that it would have been better to see that let's say 2K at 120 frames instead of your regular HD. So at least you have some workable you know crop. That you could work with and you know you know close-ups you know all that stuff that you could play with uh, especially when you're doing uh, stability shots and you want to do uh, you know uh, digital stabiliz uh, stabil stabilization even though I use regular but if let's say something happens I want to stabilize it a little more I'll have that freedom to do that because I can always crop it from a bigger thing let's say 2k that would have been great or 2.6 even uh, that would have been awesome uh, again this is still early we'll see maybe they'll add things to it uh, but right now as as it stands uh, 4k at 60 frames I would have liked to see 120 I would have liked uh, to see uh, full SDI and other than that everything is just really really cool uh, I think it's really awesome. I think they should have used, I would have loved to see two USB-C connections. So that way, if you can go to an external battery, you could put it on while you do external recording. That would have been uh, great. Uh, again, I don't want to over, you know, you know, do it and then overpower it and it, it burns out, which happened a lot in the pocket cinema camera. Uh, where you used uh, your HD, and I remember my friend burned out uh, using uh, HDMI, mini HDMI, something like that. I forgot what he did, and it burned out his entire system, and he couldn't have any connection. So this is why I want to wait till this comes out and see how this thing operates in the field, what people have, what what are their complaints, how they iron out these complaints, and then I'm going to buy it. But again, I am highly recommending this for the package that you get. Okay, all the package all together with the DaVinci Resolve. Is a freaking steal at twelve ninety five. I think that I think we could all agree on that for a thousand two hundred and ninety five dollars to have the capability of doing what uh, cameras that are like three thousand four thousand dollars do uh, right now. Especially when you're dealing with the GH four and all of that stuff. To be able to transition to something of a more professional manner to give you raw. Uh, capabilities and all of these things I think that would be a good transition if you're coming from the DSLR world to go right into this baby and I, I think you guys will really really love it and I think definitely pre-order it uh, or wait you know however you want to do it I have cameras I'm gonna wait on it I'm gonna see and then I'm gonna if I get it I'm gonna do a full-on review uh, for you guys with everything as always everything I do is self-funded I don't get paid to say things so you don't have to sift through crap so always honest reviews covering a huge array from 3d prints how to build stuff and everything and you know unboxings reviews and all that the only way you guys can help me out is by subscribing liking and hitting that bell button you guys would help me out tremendously and as always i will be releasing things as 
uh, more development comes into into play here. Have a good one, y'all. Take care. Have a great one. Take care. Bye.